So I'm playing around with this uh, this capybara um, and cucumber setup, I'm trying to get uh, a nice testing environment outside of Rails, um, just to test a completely different app. And um, I realized that I needed a thicker client to like click on non-standard. Um, HTML elements like DuckDuckGo. Um, there's this button on DuckDuckGo. And I'm using DuckDuckGo instead of Google because it's a little bit more friendly to uh, automation. But uh, I normally use Google, just like everybody. Um, so they've got this text box and then. Um, this drop down and this drop down when you when you put stuff in it and then click on one of these drop downs it kind of inserts that little bang w syntax and then submits it which you can just do like directly in the box it understands this special thing but that's not what I want to talk about I want to talk about how I would automate if this was my app that I was trying to test, how would I automate and test to make sure that this, first of all, this drop down box has all the things I expect, and then when I enter something in here, if I click on one of these things, I could check for the redirect or the submit or the page that shows up, right? So, so how do you get Capybara to do JavaScript? So you have to go with some kind of thicker client other than I decided to use um, um, Capybara Mechanize for the regular web testing, just like regular forms and stuff like that. But then for uh, bigger forms, I tried out um, Capybara WebKit, which um, you need Qt. You have to like download Qt and compile it. It takes a long time to compile it, um, which is nice. But then I've been playing around with this this Poltergeist gem. Which uses Phantom JS, um, and uh, Phantom JS is pretty nice. Uh, it actually worked exactly the same. So all I did was I just changed my gem around and um, changed my env to use uh, Polter Poltergeist driver. I changed this line. And I changed this line, but my uh, test steps actually stay the same. So this is. Um, this binding.pry right here, I'm inside of a this um, this search feature um, search auto complete. Yeah, it's actually this one. It's not. I haven't finished this feature file, but whatever. Anyway, so I'm I'm right in the smack of this enter thing. I'm trying to do heavier automation testing. So. Um, I thought this was really crazy because here's the thing is um, I'm inside of this code like this code just is just running like this when I run cucumber it runs the feature file which runs the steps and then pry, pry fires off and stops the execution like right here like like pry normally does and uh, I automatically get this page variable so if I visit duckduckgo it says success and um, the crazy thing is, like this this browser session is is this PNG. So if I render, if I like render the like if I visit some other site like um, Yahoo.com and then and render the PNG, this PNG is gonna. Um, the finder is just going to refresh this PNG. Um, but the browser doesn't exist anywhere. Like it's it's all in this memory session. So I'm I'm just I'm just rendering a PNG of what like there's no border to this page. You can actually have it render the border and the and like the I guess the desktop 
environment, I guess, like the hidden desktop environment somehow. Um, but by default, it renders the viewport, which is just like inside of your app. Um, so people that have done this before, I guess this is like this is normal, and I've done headless stuff before, but this kind of blew me away. I kind of had a future man moment. Um, you know, like here I am. Here I am. Like I've got a. A, a browser that doesn't exist anywhere and I'm automating it but then I can also just dump out a PNG of what I see so could I like could I run my test suite and then just dump out pictures and put them somewhere so I can see like what my app looks like um, could I not have a WebKit browser on a box and render out WebKit renderings and if so, like, are those pictures always gonna look the same? And if they do look the same, then can I do like some kind of image comparison to see, okay, this is what it should look like, and if my rendering changes, then the image compare. So I started getting all these illusions of grandeur with this. <laughs> uh, this feature, I was just kind of taken back by what this means. So like. <clears throat> There's this drop. There's that drop-down button, like right there, on the right-hand side. If I find that uh, that drop-down by its ID and click it, it gives me the X and Y of it, what it clicked. And like this picture, this picture hasn't updated yet. So if I just re-render this image, it's it's clicked that button. Like this browser, if I if I fill in the search box with some bunch of crap and then render it again it did that in the browser session so I don't know I'm just still amazed at what this is really doing yeah <laughs>